All right, this is going to be part three of my first look at Serato Scratch Live 1.9. Uh, there's just a couple things I wanted to uh, mention about the history uh, area. There's a couple things I didn't get to get into in my last video. Uh, so here are the columns in the history area. We have period. Uh, that is going to be uh, collapsible, and that will describe the time frame of your set, uh, which will be like today, yesterday, last week, last month, uh, etc. And then the name column, uh, the first listing is actually going to be the date of your set. And then all the songs after that will be the song's names. Artist is just going to be the artist name. Start time will be the time you started playing the songs. And end time will obviously be the time you stop playing the songs. Play time is going to be how long you played the song for. And at the top on the date listing will be the total time of your set. And then deck is uh, left or right, which deck you loaded the song to. And then notes is an edible column that you can uh, double click and type in uh, your own notes. Uh, so I have this song right here. Say this song didn't work well in the club, killed the dance floor, so you can type, oh, I don't know, sucks. Uh, so you know next time not to play that song. Uh, so those are just a couple of things I wanted to mention in the history area. But let's get on to the big feature everyone's been waiting for, the drop sampler player, which is going to be this button right here. So without further ado... <laughs> Yes, the annoying air horn sound that we all love or hate. Uh, I hate it, actually, but uh, that's not the point, so let's get into it. So here we go. Bam. The new drop sampler in Serato Scratch Live 1.9. We have a six-bank drop sampler that you can use to load all your uh, drops, jingles, sound effects, sweepers, all that good stuff. Uh, so six banks. Uh, we have three different play modes. Uh, which I'm going to get into in just a minute. Uh, this is re-trigger mode. This middle one is hold, and this last one is one shot. Obviously, you can loop the sample with this button right here. Uh, we have individual gain knobs for each of the banks. Uh, we have a master gain knob for the entire sampler output. And then we have these L, M, and R output buttons. This is going to select which output on your SL1 or your TTM57 the sample plays out of. Uh, L is for the left deck or the left uh, output on your SL1 or 57. R is for the right deck or the right output. And M is a mix of both left and right. So with M, the sample will actually play out of both left and right outputs. So this gives you a little flexibility in which side you want the sample to play out of. So let me uh, do a little demonstration of my little drops that I have set up. You're in the mix. You're, you're, you're. In the mix with DJ Conix. <laughs> so those are some of my samples that I like to uh, put in my mix. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, this uh, the drop sampler is also MIDI assignable. Uh, so click on the MIDI and then you can assign uh, the playback functions to your MIDI controller or any of the play modes, the gain knobs. Uh, the keyboard shortcuts for the drop sampler are going to be the bottom row of keys on your keyboard. Uh, that is the Z, X, C, V, B, and N keys. So the bottom row of keys are the shortcuts. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into the different playback modes. Um, this dotted arrow one is going to be re-trigger. Uh, that is when you press the button, it'll play the sample. Or you can press it multiple times to re-trigger it back from the beginning. The middle one is hold. Uh, this you actually have to hold the button on your keyboard or your MIDI controller down the entire time you want the sample to play. Uh, if you let go, the sample will stop and go back to the beginning. So that's good if you just want to play a short little snippet. Uh, oop, wrong one. So hold is, uh, you have to hold your button on your keyboard or MIDI controller down for the entire time you want the sample to play. And this last one is one shot uh, with no re-trigger. Uh, so you press the button once and it'll play the sample in its entirety. But if you hit it again a second time, uh, mid-play, it'll stop and go back to the beginning, but it won't re-trigger it. And if you want to trigger it again, you have to hit it a third time. So you got to hit the button three times. Uh, to re-trigger the sample in the one-shot mode. Uh, so those are the three different uh, play modes of the drop sampler. 
Uh, there's a couple little cool things you can do with the drop sampler. Uh, say I have my Cartman one over here, you notice it has a loop on it. Take it! And it's only playing in this loop. As you can see, I have a lot of silence at the end and at the beginning of the file. So what you can do if you have a sample like this, or if you have like a big sample pack of sounds and you only want to play a specific sample on it, uh, you can load it to a uh, regular deck at the top, and you can set the first loop point on it, um, <laughs> and it will only play this looped part. Uh, so that's good if you don't want to edit the file in a, a real way of editing program. You can just set the first loop on a particular part of the sample, and it will only play uh, the looped part. Uh, additionally, you can set the first cue point on any part of the sample and it will play from that part only. Uh, so let me... Uh, You're in the mix with DJ Say I wanted to put a cue point right there just to put it on DJ Conic. So if I put a first cue point right there, uh, you'll notice it's down here now. And if I trigger the sample, DJ Conics. It only plays from that last part after the cue point. DJ Conics. D D D J Conics. D D D D D D J Conics. All right, so that's a little couple nifty tricks you can do. You can set the first cue point or the first loop on a sample, and it'll only play from that part only. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the drop sampler. It's pretty simple, and I assume this is going to make a lot of people happy now. Uh, so we won't have to use programs like Qit Pro or any of the other uh, drop samplers. Um, nothing against Qit Pro. I think it's a good software, but I don't think it's worth $100 or uh, whatever amount they wanted to charge for it when it first came out. I think it was like 240 or some insane amount like that. So, yep, we get a drop sampler now for free in Serato Scratch Live 1.9. Now, it only has six banks. I know some people are going to complain that's not enough. So hopefully uh, we get more banks in the future versions, which I'm pretty sure they will. And unlike Qit Pro, that has to output through your internal sound card, which more likely is going to be pretty crappy. Uh, you can do it and output straight through your SL1 or your TTM57. So uh, no need for additional wires or channels on your mixer. Uh, so yep, this is the new drop sampler in 1.9. Uh, I also want to mention that you can uh, sort of use this as a pseudo third deck in Scratch Live, or 3 or 4 or 5, 6 or 7 actually, now that I think about it. Uh, there's no pitch control, unfortunately, but you can still load any normal song uh, into the sample bank and play it that way. So, I mean, essentially now you could have three or four decks in Scratch Live. Obviously, you don't get any pitch control, but, you know, if you just want to play your first song on a drop sampler, then you can load up, uh, you know, one normal song and two normal songs to the uh, the real decks in Scratch Live. So now you have three deck mixing in Scratch Live. Uh, so again, that's uh, pretty cool. It's going to open a lot of new doors, I think. So let me stop this sample. So yes, this is the new drop sampler in 1.9. Um, and that is about it for my Serato Scratch Live 1.9 videos. Um, so again, a lot of new things in Serato Scratch Live 1.9. Uh, we've got the key column, album artwork on the side of the decks, uh, the live feed feature, the sample player, which is the big one, and then also the new algorithm for loading uh, tracks, determining what tracks get turned green and marked as played, and exporting uh, your history to a text file, CSV file, and 3U file. Uh, so this has been the first look at the new Serato Scratch Live 1.9 version, uh, coming to you soon. Uh, thanks, and hope you enjoyed the videos.